Where are they? Well, as Michael is trying to fix our slideshow, would you join me in our call to worship this morning? I awoke this morning and heard one word, come. But I am a woman, an African American, differently able, an identity which has rejected in society. Come, God said, and be. But I am gay, transgender, bisexual, an identity which has rejected in Come, God said, and be one. But I believe differently and question and walk in another way. How can you say come when I do not know what I believe? Because God said, come and be as one in the kingdom. And let us be one people as we worship the one, our God. Our opening hymn today is, from what I hear, something a little new, but Carol has figured out the tune, and it's called, <laughs> We Are Called to God, Be God's People, it's number 580. <laughs>
Send your Holy Spirit into our lives once more to recreate us for this world, to open our souls to the wholeness of your holy love, to guide us wholly in ways that will bring even more people into the grace of your holy kingdom. In the name of Christ who shows us the way, we humbly and holy pray. Amen. God bless. So often, there's conflict in our world, conflict in our hearts. But when we come here, we can set that all aside and let the peace of Christ fill our souls. Let us do that now. <laughs> Please, please is a great word. 
in Scripture. I, I received a little feedback, and I apologize. I hear there is a tradition here for standing during the Gospel reading. I am well accepting. If that is what everybody would wish, please stand in your hearts or in your bodies for the gospel. Whatever works for you. Our first reading today is from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 23, verses 13 through 15. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven, for you do not go in yourselves. And when others are going in to stop you, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a, con a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of hell as yourself. Let's now sing the Lord of Pontus. worries. 
Now, the members of the choir were rather large donors in the church. I'm not sure that's really a factor, but it could be. Because what these choir members said was that they were offended by a word in the poem. Yes, offended by one of the words in my poem. They felt it was inappropriate, even hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised, of course, because this is a, a poem about our religious views, about open and affirming, about loving one another. But in the context of that poem, I decided, or in the anthem, I decided to change the word, because I, of course, didn't want to hurt anyone. Now, you may be asking what that word is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I would be kind of curious. A word that would seem so offensive and hurtful to, to the members of this choir. That word was queer. Yes, queer. And in that moment where I agreed to remove the word, I also agreed to remove the acceptance of that identity from our community. I also agreed to limit who we welcomed in the kingdom. And I kept a portion of, uh, from God, of her fruit that was due to him in the vineyard of our faith. Before I continue, would you pray with me? Holy God, hear our hearts and our minds. Hear our souls this day and guide us to continually learn and grow so we do not make the mistakes of the past. May the words from my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God. Now, beloved, what I described in this story was my mistake. It was my failure. And we all make it. That it is clear and true. It's part of being human, isn't it? I mean, realizing our mistakes and then seeking forgiveness is kind of our, well, it's kind of our thing as followers of Christ. We sort of cornered the market on it, you know? God came to forgive us of our sins. And that's what we recognize and realize in this world. But there's a caveat there. Because we still have to, we're forgiven of our sins as long as we continue to learn and grow from those mistakes, which is great. But sometimes I wonder if we are learning and growing from our mistakes, or are we getting stuck behind the right way that we have always done things in the past, or behind simple human ignorance, which that just means we don't know. We just don't know. Or there is a possibility that, God forbid, it could be that for some people it's simple, all right, greed. Did my friend come to talk to me because the people who were offended were those large donors of the church? I hope not. And I don't know. Did the people who were offended simply not understand what the word queer means? And that it's no longer an offensive word, but an identity which celebrates a person's sexuality that does not fit neatly into one of the other boxes we have created in this world. Did I change the word because these are my elders? And I had always wanted to listen to their wisdom, as I had done for years. Honestly, I can't tell you what their intentions were then. But what I do now know now is that it looks like we were hypocrites. And we were denying people who identify as queer a place in the anthem, a place of acceptance in the ONA church, a place in the very kingdom of God. And this struggle is what we contend with daily in our world especially in the ONA churches who have just recently become open and affirming. Because we're still learning. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. Churches like our own beautiful fellowship here, which 
which voted to kill open at Irving in January 19th, 2020. Yes, I looked it up. <laughs> and I love it. But have we continued to learn and grow since that time? That's a good question. One that we need to answer. And I don't know if you know this, but the town of Gray in New Gloucester has actually even adopted a new policy in our schools to be more inclusive of transgender and gender expansive students on February 1st of this very year. But have the people in Gray and New Gloucester continued to learn and grow and understand what, what that really means? What we're actually saying? Or, or in a few years will we make a mistake, a failure, while trying to support the LGBTQIA plus community, a mistake which will actually keep people away from the community, a mistake which will, could make us look like hypocrites, a mistake which could look, make us look like any of us in the world, that we're only interested in wealth or greed. That is what is at stake. That's what we're talking about. But it goes deeper than that. Because I found this very interesting. One in seven main high school students identify as LGBTQIA+. One in seven. In Gray and New Gloucester, that means 87 But we're not just talking about the students. We're also talking about their parents, their friends, their relatives, everyone that loves and cares about them. We're talking about 87 people plus who have been historically bullied, verbally assaulted, and felt unsafe at schools. And we can't afford to make that mistake by making them hurt and more. But this mistake is not something new. It's the same mistake that Jesus actually talks about in our Gospel reading today. The same mistake that the Pharisees made over and over and over again. For here in our reading in Gospel in chapter 23, Jesus begins with what the theologian A.T. Robertson calls the rolling thunder of Christ's wrath. <laughs> Which, of course, is just a flourish of ways to say it's the longest sustained denunciation or criticism of the Pharisees in the New Testament. And it's seven complete denunciations. I only shared the first two because they're a little long. But these are basically the all the problems that Jesus has with the Pharisees. And it, and we can go deep into each and every single one of those, and well, we may from some time, perhaps some weeks we will. But for today, I'd like us just to focus on one thing, what he says in every one of them. And you may have caught it in the first two. He calls them hypocrites. He says, woe to you, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. Which the original Greek word for Hypocrite actually means one who answers. But it was also used by the Greeks to say, this is an actor. This is a pretender. It's the name which Jesus calls them over and over again, saying that they are simply actors pretending to be faithful. And their actions of following the human laws and rules are what's important for them without first considering what God's law of love is. And this is what's keeping people from the kingdom in Jesus' view. It's, it's almost like those choir members who are offended and let their own prejudice about the word shape and really block people from the anthem we created together. Or or we can even go back further 
It's like the pilgrim forefathers who let their own sexism bar and ban women from being members of the church, let alone leaders of the church. Yes, the pilgrims, you couldn't be a leader of the church if you were a Or like our own Roman Catholic forefathers who liked, who let their own need for money keep all people from being forgiven for sins. It's actually the cause of the Protestant Reformation. In other words, we keep doing this. We have yet to learn and grow. We as faithful people continue to struggle with, with following God's faith first at times. And we have a real tendency to fall back and slip back into these human rules we create which blocks people from the traffic. But there is good news. There's always good news. And we see it right there in chapter 21. Because Jesus did not just denounce the prophecy Pharisees and say, okay, you're done, you're going to hell. I'm done with you. Did he? No. No, he was upset with them. Rather, he provided a series of parables to warn them. Warn them what they were doing. And the warning in today's parable was no different. And now it does carry some symbols to help us understand. According to the theologian William Barclay, he says that the vineyard was the nation of Israel. Of course, the owner is God. The son is Jesus. I'm trying to do that with those ones. But the cultivators are the religious leaders of, or the Pharisees. And the messengers were all those prophets that came in the Old Testament. So when we take that and put that into context and then realize how important this parable is, because it's actually culturally accurate, this happened over and over again in the first century. The cultivators did sometimes refuse to pay the old staff. And they would kill the messengers openly. And here Jesus is referring the Pharisees right to this horrible practice. But this warning is articulated in a way to not be abusive or abrasive or offensive but to be loved. Because that is really the good news. That even though Jesus was upset by the Pharisees for keeping people out of the kingdom, pretending to be faithful, he still loves them. He still tells them they have time. Just change your ways. And there is time ahead of them. And all of us. Because the owner of the vineyard has yet to come to judge us fully as her tenants. We still have to time to produce all the fruit of this harvest. We still have time to share the fruit of the kingdom. But we must continue to learn and grow as we focus first, first on God and the kingdom. Then witness our world around us and see how God is guiding us through this ever-changing place we live in. Now, what many of you may not know is this community here had a chance to either follow the kingdom last week or make a mistake. And I will say that I was honored to witness they followed the kingdom. It was a blessing to see, a blessing to discuss. For you see, the property of 118 were approached by the Vineyard Church about possibly renting our parish house. Now that sounds like a wonderful opportunity in any small church. But it could have been a mistake, like my own failure from many years ago. For you see, the Vineyard Church is welcoming, but not affirming. Welcoming, but not affirming. 
which means they welcome all people to come in and worship in their pews, but deny the LGBTQIA+, from being members of the church. Deny these souls who have been historically abused by churches from being accepted wholly and completely. Deny members of this community from the kingdom of God. That is what welcoming but not affirming means. Now I would like you to imagine what it would have meant to those 87 students in Gray and Gloucester, to their parents, their relatives, their friends, if we had said yes to the Vineyard Church. If we had chosen to support this community by sharing our space, what would it have meant? How would it have looked? How would it have felt? Well, I can only imagine we would have been seen as hypocrites. Actors just pretending to love all people. You know, Pharisees. Thank God we took the time to learn and grow and talk amongst ourselves to understand what our faith is calling us to. To understand what other people are saying when they tell us their truth. But beloved, let me tell you, there is still more to learn. Much more to learn. There are many ways for, that we still need to grow individually. And it is not just one of us that will teach everyone. We must learn together. And truly teach. But we can do this by many ways. By seeking out questions. By asking those questions. Why do we use pronouns? What's the deal with bathrooms? Why are our athletics big deal? What's the big deal about LGBTQ type? Why is this such a worry, especially with our students? I'll answer that one right now. Because the suicide rate is higher. Much, much higher than students. This is what's at stake. But we have to all continue to learn grow, ask questions, seek the knowledge of where God is guiding us so we can be fully here, present to everyone who walks in these doors, to everyone in Gray and in Gloucester, to everyone in the world, so we may continue to provide God all the fruits of this vineyard of faith that we can. May today be a blessing of love as we continue to learn how to faithfully love all people regardless of human rules we place upon people with love.
he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Another change in our in our bulletin instead of concerns of the church, which the deacons were saying was a little confusing, we put announcements. I hope that's all right. Are there any announcements amongst the congregation today? As we do every year, we observe All Saints Day. This year it will be on Sunday, November fifth. So if you have someone, family member, or friend who has passed away this past year, please give me their name so they would be remembered on that day. Just a quick stewardship moment. Um, our drive is underway. Anybody who wishes to pledge that has not received a form, um, there's extras in the back. And they will be due the, the last Sunday of the month. And thank you so much. Um, I'm making the video for the church, and I need a lot of help from everyone here. So if I approach you on some task, think in your heart that perhaps it would be a good thing to do. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and I know it's uncomfortable for people, and it's a little awkward and odd and whatnot, but we'll make a beautiful piece for this church with your help and with God's guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now she's going to be on the IR list for, for skating. Uh, next week, as soon as. Oh, there you are. Uh, you're hanging by, sorry. Uh, next week is Miriam's 101 birthday. Uh, if she's here, uh, She's expecting you, I'm sure, to, uh, to be spoiled over. Uh, but uh, let's put together a little something. Um, and, you know, bring cards, uh, no gifts. Uh, I don't know what she would do with any gifts. Uh, but, but bring cards, and we'll have, we'll have a uh, place for those, and we'll try to uh, make her the, uh, have, have a uh, special spot in the service. Mary is very fond of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Dark chocolate. milk? Chocolate. Just chocolate. Just chocolate. Yes. Sounds like me. Evelyn also asked me to share an announcement. Um, the annual reports are needed this month for anyone who is working on an annual report. Um, please get those to Evelyn as soon as you can. And I just want to share a couple announcements from around the conference, or from the around the association. This afternoon there is an ecclesiastical council for, I don't remember his name, but it's over in Gorham, and I will give you the details if you're interested in going. On October 28th, Casco Village is having a spectacular supper. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it sounds like a fun supper. And Raymond Village is passing out candy and having fellowship on Halloween night. So, just wanted to share a few of the events that are happening most of all.
that first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful to know. Just one more announcement. All right, so uh, Brian mentioned the you know, uh, annual reports. This were for my go over who in the annual week this year to the little November 12th. So we're going to have it right here after the service. That's up. I think the goal of that, Chris, was to, to get the budget done early in the year.
God calls us to learn, to grow, to teach all people as we learn and grow ourselves. Let us do as Christ does and step forth in the world to where people are and continue to worship in all of our actions and words. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever.